Hello world, my name is Ihor and today let's make some music using an arpeggiator. But first, let's talk about what arpeggiator is. And for those who know that, you can skip to this timestamp where we start patching and all this stuff. So what is an arpeggiator? Arpeggiator takes its roots from the music theory from broken chords, actually. And a broken chord is a way of playing chord in a sequence of notes instead of playing all the notes simultaneously. So while playing the broken chords, you're allowed to repeat notes or play them randomly. Now comes the term arpeggio. And arpeggio is a way of playing the broken chords, but in rising or descending order. Let me show you real quick. So we have this chord, for example, G minor. And that's how you play, right? Three notes. But if you play it like this, This is a broken chord. And if you play it like this, this is also a broken chord, but this is also arpeggio because it plays in the rising order, or like that. Same thing, it's a broken chord, it's an arpeggio, but playing in the descending order. Now, Arpeggiator is, is a kind of a feature or a software that is present in uh, synthesizers or in music boxes or in sequencer or even in VSTs or DAWs that actually does this manual playing of arpeggio or even the broken chord for you. So let me switch Minilog into the ARP mode and press the same chord and listen to what happens. It plays it perfectly for you. In relation to a clock, and you can change the modes as well. You can do rising, falling, or even random, which is sort of a broken chord now, not really arpeggio. But let's go back. And of course, different synthesizers and different sequencers might have slightly different arpeggiators. However, the concept remains the same. And today I would like you to join me in this little journey of exploring the arpeggiator feature on the Minilog XD. We're gonna create a patch from scratch and play with it a little bit. I'm gonna share a couple of ideas that I have. Also, we're gonna mix it with the drum bits here that I prepared on the Octa track. And also the polyphony of the Minilog is gonna play an important role in this patch. So when it comes to the setup, it's quite straightforward. I have audio coming from the mini log into the octa track, which is going into the track seven, which is a through track. And then I have other tracks set as samples or loops and stuff like that, where I have prepared the drum beat. And the mini out from the octa track is going into mini log to provide the clock, but we are going to utilize the sequencer of the mini log. And of course, every patch starts with some settings. I'm gonna go into the global edit mode into the last page over here and then to the last parameter that says shift function. This one is quite interesting. It's kind of a handy tool. So by default, it says favorite. That means that while holding shift, the sequencer buttons are going to be the kind of shortcuts to the favorite presets that you have. That might be useful while you play and you would like to switch presets real quick, or for example, you can save one preset to 16 different slots and then have different sequences per each, and then you can change them during live performance and stuff like that. But today I would like it to have at the active step. So what active step means is that while holding shift, we see all the buttons of the sequencer lit, and then we can basically disable the steps that we don't need. So we can make sequence longer or shorter, just on the go, which is quite handy. The next thing to configure is gonna be sequence editing mode. And I'm gonna go into the second page. These are ARP parameters. And first one here is rate. And rate defines how fast your arpeggiator triggers the notes. In this case, it's set to 1 16th of a note and it's perfect for us. I'm gonna leave it as such. And the next one is gate time. And gate time defines for how long the gate is gonna be high within this one step of arpeggiator. So this gate is related to arpeggiator only. I'm gonna leave it at 50%. That means that the gate is gonna be open for half of this 16th note, and then it's gonna be closed. 
And the next page to configure is sequencer parameters. And here, the first parameter is step length. This one defines how many steps our sequencer has. And since we have this shift and active step thingy, this one is a little bit redundant as of now. Now, step resolution. This one defines how fast the sequencer will trigger the steps over here. And right now it's set to 1 16th. I'm going to set it to 1, which means that every single step of the sequence is going to be one bar in relation to clock. The next one is swing. We don't need it. And now default gate time. So default gate time defines for how long the step is going to hold the gate high on the sequencer. So it's not related to our parameters. It's right now about sequencer. Basically, right now, when our step is one bar long and default gate time at 75%, if you put a note or a chord in one step, it's going to play back for three fourths of a bar or 75% of a bar, and then the rest is going to be silent. So in this case, we would like it to be 100% because I would like Arpeggiator to keep playing within an entire bar. Hope that makes sense. And this is quite important to set. And I think we are good to go. I'm going to go and clear the sequence as well so that we don't have anything on the sequence. It's all cleared and ready. Now let's go one octave down on the keyboard. And I would like to sequence a chord to play the arpeggiator. I'm going to go and disable all the steps but two. So we're going to have just two bars over here. And then I'm going to hit record over here on Minilog and play D minor. So while holding D minor, it's going to record these notes into the sequencer. And I'm going to press rest, which is going to advance us into the step two. And by pressing rest over here, I made a tie in between these two um, steps on the, on the sequencer. So basically, these two steps, they become just one long step. So the gate is going to remain open since the first bar. It's going to go into the second bar and remain open or notes will be held. So if I play it back right now, you probably going to hear it. So you can hear that it kind of breaks the pattern at the first bar. It kind of resets, right? And now we can go and create some kind of sawtooth plucky sound. I'm going to introduce some filter and filter envelope over here. So we don't have any effects as of now, just your sound. And we don't have any release yet on the amp envelope. And that's where actually the polyphony of the mini log XD plays an interesting role. So listen to that. If I increase the release, the notes, they're going to play over each other and they're going to blend because it's a four voice synthesizer. And now if we open up the filter a little bit more, sounds really good, right? Nice. Let's get back to our plucky sound. So this trick with opening up the filter and release and then it kind of blends all together might be quite a useful tool for performance to create tension. And another quite useful thing on the Minilog is that you can play together with Arpeggiator. So right now it's playing the three note sequence. It's a D minor. So let's add D from higher octave and listen to what happens. Now it plays four note sequence. And if we hit record, we can overdub this. So right now the first bar is three note sequence. And the second bar is four notes because we overdubbed yet another D octave higher. Nice. Another thing which I really like doing on this mini low, we give it a little bit of release. Rate at about, not a maximum, but a three o'clock sort of. LFO and then assign the LFO to pitch and we can detune slightly.
power a lot. Welcome to the Techno Territory. This is quite an interesting feature. And again, there are no effects on, on the mini log. I didn't turn any effect on. This release kind of sounds like reverb to me, which is, which is quite good. Let's add a little bit of drive. Compensate volume. And now I'm gonna go into the second oscillator and put it into the square wave and one octave down. And right now we can blend it in and remove the sawtooth. modulation and we are entering techno territory again so the second oscillator of the mini log can be cross modulated by first oscillator and it can create some kind of like detuned stuff like right now or it can go quite crazy if you go further ring modulation You got the idea, right? So we're back to square wave normal. I'm gonna save these patches of now. And I think it's time to play together with drums. But before doing so, we have to mix it on the Octatrack a little bit. Nice, and here on the Octatrack, I, as I mentioned before, I have the drum groove prepared already. And I would like you to listen to the kick drum and the sort of like rumble first. Because this is where I expect some problems to happen. And this is why I would like to mix the synth actually. And to mix it, we can go into track seven. There is a filter over here. And I would like to make two things here actually. So the first one is a ducking effect so that our kick drum has some space to kick through the mix. And the second one is to remove low end from the synth sound so that it does not interfere with our rumble that we have over here. And for both of these features, filter on the track number seven where our mini log is, is more than enough. So first of all, I'm gonna go into the sequencer over here. So we have just one trick because we need to enable the machine to play the mini log back and now I can go and create some trigless tricks over here where our kick drum is. So all these tricks they're gonna start triggering the envelope and especially the effects envelopes. And if I go into the secondary amp page I should enable on the effects one the R plus T feature which means trigger and retrigger. That means on every trig this envelope of filter on the effects one is gonna trigger. And now if I introduce the depth of this envelope into the negative territory, it's actually gonna start docking the filter. But right now is a little bit too much. So it cuts too, too much. There is, the release phase is too long for the envelope. And it's good that we can use this envelope because it's easy to control this envelope, right? So we can Increase the amount of decay, maybe touch of attack, so that there is no clicks. And right now if I introduce some bass, bass is gonna cut the, it's, it's sort of like a high pass filter and I would like to cut really super low end of the of the synthesizer right now. If I go too much, it's gonna sound creepy because we removed all the low end, but we probably have to keep it at around 40 or something to 
together with Rumble. Okay, before I got carried away, let's also put some more chords on the sequence. And for that, I'm gonna go and enable more steps over here. I would like them to be eight. That means that we have eight bars of the sequence. And now I'm gonna hit record and record the chord progression and go into the harmonic structures territory. So I'm gonna start with D minor, rest, then G minor, inverted, rest, then C, rest, and then back to D minor, rest. And now I'm gonna go into motion mode and hold the last note over here or last bar over here and change the arpeggiator type into the random, random one. So that means that on this last bar, the arpeggiator is gonna play randomly, but all the other bars, they're gonna play rise. So basically from lowest note to higher note. Let's listen to that. Maybe a chorus. Just not too much. Just to have it a little bit spread into the stereo field. And now with hi-hat. of resonance. Let's go into some kind of breakdown and move into this saw. reverb over here. On the octa track. And let's build it up over here. Right now, let's remove the tension as well and bring the kick back. Or maybe a bass as well. Removing the saw. Let's go 
into the techno territory. I think for that we can remove some steps. And leave it on just D minor. Ducking more. Resonance. <laughs> okay, let's try to bring it back to to normal. Let's try to go back to to the break. It's gonna be a little tricky, but I would like to introduce all the harmonic structures back when we go to break. But we have to be on the sawtooth. Yes, landed. Nice. Now the clap or snare. a little bit. Okay, I love it. It's not gonna play as such. Polyphony, like no reverb. Nice, I like it so much.
of synthesizers they feature these arpeggiators or you can find them in music boxes for example the octatrack has it so i suggest you go and explore and try and fail with these kind of settings and stuff like that and have fun and for today i think that's pretty much it for this video i really appreciate all of you there for your comments and support and stuff like that and i really hope you enjoyed watching this video and you found some useful tips for your own music production workflow for example or just got inspired to go and make music And if you're considering to purchase any kind of gear that I feature in my videos, you can always use the affiliate link in the description down below. That's gonna help me without any extra costs for you. You can also consider to become my Patreon. Check the link to my Patreon and all these tiers in the description as well. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like my creations. It means a lot and also it helps the algorithm a little bit to push this video to more people. And if you would like to check another video about the baseline sound design on the Mini Log XD, you can watch this video. Or if you would like to learn more about how to make a techno track just on the Octa track, you can check this video. I appreciate you, and until the next time, have fun. <laughs>